Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Can you all hear me? Thank you. It seems to be almost an annual ritual for me to be up here for the last nine years, talking to all my friends and, uh, and fellow compatriots at Sea Shepherd. And one of the rituals is, I, by the way, I have a little present uh, for Sea Shepherd. I have a check for $30,000. Uh, if someone would like to come up and pick it up. Peter Hammerstead. Now, every year before the Antarctica campaign begins against the Japanese whalers, I always say, I hope this will be the last. And after every successful campaign that shuts them down, I say, surely this must have been the last. And why shouldn't I be confident? In one campaign, Sea Shepherd chased the whaling fleet 4,000 nautical miles out of the killing fields and in towards South Africa. In another campaign, the Nishan Maru, a floating slaughterhouse, caught fire and was escorted out of the whale sanctuary like a humiliated drunkard. Their rust bucket ship, a factory of death, threatened precious ecosystems in the Ross Sea around Cape Adair. And these killers had the gall to blame Sea Shepherd, even though the Robert Hunter and the Fowley Moat were 1,000 kilometers away, steaming in the opposite direction. Each year, the Japanese poachers have been humiliated ethically and bankrupted financially. They have been exposed in the international community as liars and frauds. Their business plan is based on bribery. Brown paper bags stuffed with cash for poor countries in exchange for votes at the International Whaling Commission. And some pro-whaling collaborators are actually landlocked nations who don't have a coastline, don't have a boat, don't have an industry, and have never seen a whale. Of course, this makes them ideally qualified to vote pro-whaling at the IWC. The Japanese kill whales they do not need in waters they do not own, for meat they cannot sell, for a taste they do not like, and they call it research. And our Australian politicians have failed us too. Tony Abbott bragged that he would turn back the boats. But he meant poor, leaky refugee boats to our north, not rich poaching ships at 60 degrees south. And he also promised to send the Australian Navy or a Coast Guard ship to Antarctica to meet the Japanese and the Sea Shepherd fleets. And he has now changed his mind. I guess modern real politics has taught us that cash is more powerful than character. And even after we have beaten the Japanese poachers every year, they arrogantly keep coming back. I remind you of the closing lines of that old Brecht book called the, the Resistible Rise of Arturo Yuri. He has a thinly veiled reference to Hitler, and he wrote the book long before the war even ended. Do not rejoice in his defeat, ye men, for though the world stood up and defeated the bastard, the bitch that bore him is on heat again. We need to keep our eyes and ears open. Albert Camus wrote the masterful book, Le Pest, The Plague, about an Algerian town called Oran, which suffered a deadly plague of rats. The entire township put aside all their differences to finally, after many years, defeat the plague. And finally, life returned to normal. But sometimes, when the evening breeze comes in from the east, there is a faint, sickly stench, reminding the survivors that the rats are still down there, hiding underground, waiting 
reminding citizens not to be complacent, but most importantly, under the new regime, that we are now living under a new world order and it will never go away. Eternal vigilance is the price we pay for liberty. You see, the oceans are dying in our time. By 2048, all our fisheries will be dead, poisoned by the fishing, meat and dairy industries. On this basis, no child in this room will ever reach retirement age if that doesn't send a chill down your back. This is a mathematical impossibility. And the oceans are being king hit from all sides. Factory farms spew chemicals into the ocean, creating hypoxic dead zones of one million square kilometers, killing plants, coral, and ocean animals. The ocean bed today is a moonscape, and the sea is a toxic soup of acid. And we treat the oceans as a private pantry and as a public toilet. The Pacific gyra now is so full of plastic, junk, and human feces, it has created a floating footprint bigger than India. Trillions of fish are ground up into pellets to feed to livestock. Vegetarian cows are now the world's largest ocean predators. And necklaces of long lines now strangle the globe, some of them 100 kilometers long, with 10 billion steel hooks, killing dolphins, albatrosses, and turtles. Dolphins and whales are stabbed to death in the shallows of Taiji and the Faroes Islands. Entire bays are blood red. 100 million sharks are torn from the sea and their fins hacked off and they thrown overboard to die agonizing deaths for shark fin soup. In human history, only 100 billion people have ever lived. Only 7 billion people live today and yet we torture and kill 2 billion sentient animals every week. 2 billion a week. And we stab and suffocate one billion ocean animals every three hours. One billion every three hours. 10,000 entire species are wiped out every year because of the actions of one species. And we are killing species before we have even met them. We now face the sixth mass extinction in cosmological history. And let me tell you, if any other organism did this, a biologist would call it a bloody virus. It is a crime of unimaginable proportions. Now, Trix and I support about 500 projects in about 40 countries. And people have seen our work on land, have met our people, and have touched our structures. But nobody knows about our marine projects, like fighting against drift netting, whaling, long lining, shark finning, plastic and sewage dumping, dead zones and agricultural runoff. So why are they invisible? Because like all atrocities, the ocean is out of sight and out of mind and nobody cares. And that is why Sea Shepherd is so important. They shine the spotlight into these dark, nasty places where evil resonates to the sound of a cash register. This seafood industry is a squalid, obscene, taxpayer-funded scam. They are wiping out entire fish populations like a plague, and they are open-cutting and clear-felling the oceans, just like the meat industry did to our forests. And these dynamics are asymmetric. More ships, bigger capacities, larger freezers, spotter planes, sonar technology, toxic chemicals, richer consumers, bigger appetites, dirtier governments versus fewer fish, powerless creatures, poisoned oceans, sicker animals, unimaginable suffering, fractured food chains, extinct species, and cruel wastage. Believe me, restaurants that dress up a dead fish don't fool me for a second. I know they're in the business of putting lipstick on a corpse. And we all know that whales are iconic animals, loved by everybody. So if you remember nothing of what I say today, please remember this. 
if we can't save the whales, we can save nobody. Nobody. Not the dolphin, not the tuna, not the albatross, not the sharks, not the turtles, not the seals. Nobody. And therefore, not the tigers, not the lions, elephants, deer, or kangaroos. We can save nobody. We can't even save you. So this is not a zero-sum game where the Japanese win is an environmental loss or an environmental win is a Japanese loss. It is much worse. If the Japanese win, we don't just lose. Everybody dies. Recently, a Melbourne court sentenced a refugee to two years in prison for poaching 30 kilos of abalone. Now, let's apply the same jurisprudence to the crews of the factory ships, the harpoon ships, and the spotter ships. I added up the crew lists of the Nishan Maru, the two Shonan Murus, the three Yushan Marus, and the Oriental Bluebird. And in the years that I've been supporting Sea Shepherd, the Japanese poachers have killed over 6,000 Mickey and Finn whales. And then I compare the weight of these sentient animals killed by the rich Japanese with the 30 kilos of abalone taken by the poor refugee. Well, if the sentence was consistently applied, each Japanese crew member would be sentenced to 20,000 years in prison, 400 lifetimes, every single one of them. And that is twice as long as the longest sentence ever imposed on the most notorious serial killers in the United States. So instead of trying to arrest Paul Watson, maybe the Japanese could lock up their own whalers instead. The real criminals. The Japanese are not whalers, they are poachers. We prosecute poor Africans for killing wild animals in the bush for bushmeat. Well, to the Japanese, whales are the bushmeat of the oceans. Now, as Martin Luther King said, cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it polite? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? What Sea Shepherd does is not safe. It is not polite. And it is not universally popular. But it is right. It is right because people like you, people of conscience, people of integrity, people of character, people of wisdom, say it is. So I would ask you all to join this battle in a war that we cannot afford to lose. You see, my heart knows how things were meant to be. And because it knows, it breaks. The oceans need your help. We have the ships, we have the crews, and we have the courage to do it. So please help Sea Shepherd end this atrocity. Please write out a check, call the Australian and Japanese governments, and help us all rewrite history. And I leave the crews with the words that my mother read to me when I was a little boy. Christopher Robin is reading to Winnie the Pooh. If ever there is a tomorrow when we are not together, there is something you must always remember. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. But most importantly, even if we are apart, I will always be with you. Thank you all for being here.